video I'm going to show you how you can recreate the latest Iman Gazi editing style using AI and After Effects. With the 3D5 Pro plugin, we will transform your images into a dynamic 3D scene in just one click. The link of the plugin and a 10% discount code is linked in the description, so let's dive in. The first thing you'll have to do is simply go to the Leonardo AI website to create your images. Simply go ahead, click on image creation. Now what you'll have to do is to simply pick your style, the right preset style is the illustrative albedo style and then you'll have to put the preset style to illustrations now simply write a prompt of your choice and make sure to write this right there i'll simply click on generate and you're supposed to have something similar to this now once you're happy with one of your images what you can do is simply select one and click on download once you downloaded your image what you're gonna have to do is simply open a photoshop project and import the image inside of this project now what i'm gonna do is simply Click on the layer right there and copy it three times. The first layer will be for the background. The second layer will be for the pillars and the third layer will be for the characters. Now I'll start with the first layer, which is my background. So the first thing that I'll do is simply select everything that I don't want to be inside of my backgrounds. So I'll delete the pillars and the people. So once you selected a region, what you can do is simply click on generate fill and click on generate. And once this is done, what you can do is simply merge it down with the background. And now simply delete the pillar and the people again, simply by selecting them. And once again, you're going to have to click on generate to fill and generate. First layer is done. Now what I'm going to do is simply pull out the second layer and I'm going to isolate the pillars, which is my middle ground. So what I'm going to do is simply pick the pen tool and I'm simply going to make a selection around the pillar. Now simply go ahead and click on that right there, make a right click, click on select inverse and simply click on delete on your keyboard. Now you're left with this, what you're going to have to do is simply select the parts where we see the humans again. And you're simply going to have to hit a generative fill, click on generate. Now make sure to simply clean up the mess afterwards. Now that the middle ground is done, what you're going to have to do is simply select the, th the third layer and you're simply going to have to click on select subject and it will select our subject automatically for you. Simply make sure to clean up the messed up parts like this. Now simply select inverse and delete everything except the subjects. Now as you can see, everything is separated accordingly. Now simply save your Photoshop project and you're going to have to open inside of After Effects, open a new project. Now what you're going to have to do is simply import your Photoshop file inside of After Effects. Click on OK. 
Now what you're gonna have to do is simply double click on the composition. And as you can see, we got all of our layers, but I'm gonna add more layers to it. So as you can see in the original video, there's some parts of blueprints just appearing in the video. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna simply import a blueprint picture like this. And I'm simply gonna add a black and white effects to it. And I'm simply gonna put the, the blue down like that. Now what I'm gonna do is simply duplicate duplicate it two times like this now i'm going to take the first one and i'm simply going to select a part of the blueprint that i like so i'm going to select this part right there and i'll do the same for the second one Now sim simply click on the double switches mode and put both of these blueprints into screen mode. Now what I'm going to do is simply place them accordingly into my layers and just make sure to scale them up correctly. Now what we need to do is to simply converge this picture into a 3D animation. And this is why we're going to use the 3D5 Pro plugin. It will do it will convert this picture right there into a 3D sequence with just one click. So simply go ahead and click on this button right there. And as you can see, if we go into two views, the whole scene got converted into 3D and this is good for us. And if you want more room into the 3D space, what you can do is simply play around with the room size like so. Now I'll simply go back to one view and I'll simply position my camera by selecting the camera controller right there and clicking on, on P and I'm gonna do a simple animation. So I'm gonna add a keyframe right there I'll simply put it my put my camera like that and then I'll just make it pan like so and make sure it zooms a little bit like that. And as you can see, the pillar is kind of cutting out. So to fix this problem, what you're going to have to do is simply select, select it and click on expand selected layer. And this is supposed to fix your problem. Now you got yourself your little animation. What you can do with the blueprints is to simply make a simple opacity transition with a simple keyframe trace. Simply add a first keyframe, put it at zero, go a few frames forward and put it at 100% and do the same for the second blueprint. So now the next step is to simply select the so now the next step is to make this little banner right there. So what I'm going to do is simply select the pen tool and I'm simply going to create a shape that has the form of a ripped paper. So I'm simply going to make it make sure that it holds the form of a ripped paper at the bottom. Now what you're gonna have to do with this shape what, is to simply put it into a pre-composition and now make sure to add a textured kind of old paper type of texture inside of the, your composition. Make sure to scale it up and add a black and white effect into it. I'm gonna lighten up a little bit. Then what you're gonna have to do is make sure it's under the shape layer and you're going to make sure that the track math option is into the shape layer like that. And we're going to proceed to create a little animation. So I'm simply going to scale it up slightly like that. Okay. Now I'm simply going to add some drawings, add the black and white effect, lighting up a bit. And what I'm going to do with these drawings is simply masking them out for me to simply add a feather effect into them for them to fit better into the composition. So once this is masked, what you can do is simply pull this down, click on mask, mask again, then mask feather, pull it down again and make sure and click on no match and make sure it's linked to shape layer one and simply make sure to position it the way you want it to be. You can also make a little animation with this drawing right there. And I'm simply going to do it, the same thing with another drawing and I'm simply going to animate this drawing also.
Now what I'm going to do is simply add a text. I'm going to put it in the middle. I'll simply write anything like this and I'm going to center the text. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is simply search for the linear wipe, simply apply it to the text. Make sure that it's minus 90 degrees like that. And what you're going to have to do is simply add a keyframe to the transition completion. Make sure it's at uh, zero percent. 100% now go ahead, go a few frames forward and put it at 0% now what you're gonna have to do is simply copy and paste your text and on this the text under the original one what you're gonna have to do is simply select it and put it into a red text and what you're gonna have to do is simply make the keyframe of the red text a little bit closer to each other so now it gives us this reddish kind of transition when the text appears So now you can simply s place your banner like that. You can scale it up if you want. I'm simply, and I'm simply gonna push it a little bit further like that. And I'm gonna click on P to make it appear out, out of the top. Like that. And I'm simply gonna add the drop shadow effect. And I'm going to put the softness a little bit up like that. And I'll also apply a motion blur effect to this thing right there. Now I'm simply going to pre-comp everything. I'm going to add a posterized time effect to the main composition. And I'm simply going to put it at 20 frames per second. This is what the final result gives me. I hope the video was helpful for you guys. I teach you how to make an insane 3D map animation that will be useful in your next videos. So I'll see you guys right there.